He said, while employers, he said, while employers are looking for people to fill certain positions in their companies, they are unable to find graduates with the skill set they are looking for. And when did he say this? 73rd annual New Year's group conference at the University of Ghana, just last week. So that is the reality that confronts everybody in the university now. You guys, um, from what you have been taught, you think you are okay for the market. The employers are saying that the current skill set that you have does not make you employable. So there's a big gap and that gap has to be filled. And that is the reason why I'm happy to be on this call. We need to ensure that by the time you guys leave the university, you will have the kind of skill set that employers are looking for. And I will encourage all of you to go out there and try to search out for those kind of skills. But I'll tell you a few here. Now, based on that research that we did, we interviewed over 5,500 finance professionals from over 2,000 organizations in 150 countries. And they came out with some findings. And let me share the findings with you. What did they tell us? They told us that finance leaders must be able to what? Integrate, apply, and communicate. So when you are working in an organization, don't work in silos. You should be able to integrate whatever you are getting with people from other areas and be able to communicate effectively. Communication is key. The other one was that you should be able to contribute insights into the drivers of cost, risk, and value. And the third one was to create influential and effective part business partner relationships. Now ask yourself as graduates of the or undergraduates of the University of Ghana Business School, are you in a position to do all of these things that the employers are telling us that they need in the future? If you don't have these skills now, I would encourage you to find a way of getting these skills. Now we summarize those concerns into five key areas. So you see here on the right, they told us that you all need what we call the technical skills. So those of you doing accounting, those of you doing finance and banking and everything, those core subjects are the technical skills. And if you come out of UGBS, you have those skills anyway. So that's fine. But when you leave UGBS, you are going to work within the business environment. So you need the business skills to be able to know what skills the business you also need what we call people skills. Because you see, when you go into the organization, you, hello? Play music in the background. Okay. So when you go into the organization, you need people skills because you see, you have to work with human beings and relate with human beings. So for example, I know some students who come to the university and all they focus on is their books. So Volta Hall to the lecture theater and back to the room. You don't do anything, you don't socialize. When you go to the workplace, you need those skills. And I'll encourage you to find ways of um, gathering those people's skills because you have to learn how to deal with human beings. Then you also need leadership skills, which is also very crucial. What Ivy and the team, um, and the team of finance professionals are doing now is very important. I mean, for them to organize this event is showing that these girls or these ladies have leadership skills. When you go to the workplace, these are some of the things that employers require from you. And you must learn them now whilst you have the chance in the university. Now in the middle, you have what we call the digital skills. You cannot do anything going forward without digital skills. So you can have all the knowledge and everything if you lack the digital skills, you will not succeed in the finance world. And that's why we have put that one in the center because you realize digital has become part of us. Okay. So now what are some of the changes that we've identified in the world? Let's look at a few of them. The world has become fast paced and we have unpredictable disruption. I mean, we all know the impact of COVID on our operations. If you're an organization, and you don't have a proper strategy. COVID can easily, easily take you out of business and you must have a strategy around it. Organizations are, okay, so let's look at what is driving all of these changes. Globalization is a key thing. Um, whatever happens, the world has become a small place, a global village. Whatever happens in America um, has an effect on people in Ghana.
I'm sure you are all what's happening. Let's look at what is happening at work now. Um, we have about five generations working together now. My generation, those are, um, ahead of us, and your generation all coming to the workplace. Your needs and what is the other thing is here is there. We need to work together as a team. So as an employer and as a, um, a finance professional, how are you going to manage your relationship with all the people that you are going to be working with? You need to factor that in your training. Customers have also become very powerful. So if you are working in an organization, you must also look at the needs of your customers and develop adequate products and services to meet their needs. Otherwise, they will leave you. And I'm sure you are aware that if you don't satisfy your customer here, a person can just go online, Google it, and find a customer anywhere in the world, and they buy from them. So you need to know all of these things. And these are things that, as final, future finance professionals, we must be aware of as we move into the work space. Then technological automation, I'm sure you are all aware of it. It has made the world easier a bit for us to do things, and you must understand. Now, what are the challenges and responses that the finance team will have to come up with? When you go to the workplace, and those of you who did finance and who are still doing finance and accounting, when you go to the workplace, the board will want you to maximize shareholder value with what minimal risk. As you are learning your accounting and your finance, they are telling you the higher the risk, the higher the return, lower risk, lower return. But when you come to the workplace, they are telling you maximize the shareholder value, but don't take too much of risk. Are you going to tell them that when I was in the business school, they told me that that's not how it works. They will take, they will, they will let the security throw you out. So you must be agile in terms of your thinking and your training. And that's why SEMA is preparing our students and members to do all of those things. Your customers want to do business with you at very low cost. They don't want to be paying all transactional fees. And if you force them, they will move to the next level. So these are all things that have affected our workspace. And as finance professionals, I will encourage you, you must prepare yourself before you get to the workplace, otherwise you'll be surprised. Now, the big challenge is the challenges and opportunities of automation. Now, almost everything that we, we can do as finance professionals has been automated. So if you don't do things right, your job will be taken away by the computers. And when I was coming this morning again, I was listening to the lecturer from Ashesi, a lecturer in robotics and artificial intelligence the kind of things artificial intelligence is doing, robotics, you have no idea. And I'm telling you, if you don't do things differently and you go to the workplace, you will have nothing to do and you become irrelevant. You start blaming your investors. No, you have to do other things. Let's look at a typical situation that happened in an organization. They were running some reports each month and it took 800 people one month to be able to write those reports. With the introduction of artificial intelligence, it, they needed only two people and they needed only two days to be able to write the same report or produce the same report. Now, ask yourself what happened to the 798 people who were doing the work. Clearly, they've lost their jobs. And if we don't do things about ourselves, we don't learn new skills, like the minister was saying, we will become irrelevant and nobody will employ us. There will be vacancies, but they will not take us because they will tell us that we don't have those skills. So how should we respond? As the finance profession, and so maybe for this for this discussion, the finance department of UGBS, how should we respond to these changes that confront us? We need to change the kind of skill set that we have and the competencies. If you go into the market with a first degree just like that, you will be surprised because nobody will employ you. So let's ask ourselves: Do you think that going forward, the machines have advantage or human? I will encourage you to find some of these technological skills and add. Okay. 
Now, so this is the SEMA competency framework. We think that when we learn around some of these things, we better some of these skills, we'll come up as a better graduate. You will not just come out, if, even if you come with the first degree and you don't have some of these other skills, because look at it here, you have the technical skills. These are the hardcore skills, but look at the business skills, look at the people skills and look at the leadership skills. These are soft skills and employers are not looking at only the technical skills. They look at both the technical, the hard skill and the soft skills. And you must be a well-rounded finance professional to be able to um, find your place in the um, future. So I will encourage you, don't develop only your technical skills. Yes, get your ace and everything, but look for other skills that will make you a well-rounded finance professional. So I want to bring everything down quickly as I wrap up into the CIMA professional qualification. Um, CIMA has um, taken into consideration all the research findings that we got from employers around the globe. And we have used that one to develop our syllabus to ensure that by the time you leave the university, if you're a CIMA member, you have all the digital skills that are needed by top class employers. Okay, and I'll show you in a bit. So look at some of the things that we've introduced in our qualification just after our research. And these are the business skills. You learn about strategy, you learn about business models, market and regulatory environment, process management, business ecosystems. These are all new things that you guys need to learn and ask yourself. like cloud compute, data analytics, we've introduced artificial intelligence, we've introduced blockchain, we've introduced internet of things, 3D printing. These are all new things. And I'm telling you, CIMA has incorporated these things just to ensure that by the time you leave the university with your CIMA qualification, you, you will be, it will be easy for you to get what? A job. Look at all the things that we've put here. Economics of digitization. If they are not teaching you now, please go online. You can still find them. But if you join CIMA, you know that you can get all of these skills easily. Cybersecurity, these are all key skills that you need moving forward as a finance student. So I just wanted to draw your attention to some of the things that CIMA has done in response to the challenges facing those of us in the finance world. I'll tell you, your first degree is OK, but it is not enough to secure you the kind of jobs that you guys are looking for you need to add something. Look at the number of people who get first class um, from the University of Ghana alone. Now, if you go to the interview and all you have is first class banking and finance, what makes you stand out from the other hundreds of thousands of people who are first class? I'll encourage you, it doesn't matter which area, but don't leave the university with your first degree only. Add additional skills. If you want to do marketing, go and um, get your professional marketing degree. Um, qualification. If you want to do banking, get your professional banking qualification. If you want to do accounting, go and get your CIMA qualification. God, that will let you stand out from the crowd. So as I wrap up, this is the last um, slide. You realize that we have introduced a new online digital learning system because everything has gone digital. So we cannot continue teaching our students the same way we're teaching them 20 years ago or 30 years ago when I was in the university. So we've, we call this one the SEMA Finance Leadership Program, and it's developed for those of you in the universities now. It provides a new assessment and learning pathway to the prestigious SEMA qualification. And we build finance competency across a broad set of technical, business, digital, and people skills. It focuses on real world application and knowledge integration in a digital world. So realize that all the digital things that we've been talking about, we've put them on our system and you can just join us and start learning so that you can easily become a qualified person for the world of work in the future. Okay. Now, so this is the SEMA qualification. So let's look at how it's structured. You realize that, that we have the qualification um, in three levels. We have, three not, levels. we have the operational level, we have the management level, and we have the strategic level. So they build on each. 
if you look at each level has four papers. So you can see paper E1 here, we call it managing finance in the digital world. So we've introduced um, finance in the digital world, but that the world is digital now. We have management accounting and we have financial reports. Then we have a case study on top of that level. When you come to the next level, we have three papers and it's a case study. Then you go to our final level, we have three papers in the case study. Now, under the old system, under the SEMA uh, old system, each level had four papers. So you had to go to the exam center four times. So you go there four times and take your exams and get your results each time. What we have done now is that we have converted the three papers at each level into continuous assessments. So instead of going to the exam center four times at each level, you, you, you take the three papers as continuous assessment. Then you go to the exam center once to do the case study. Then you have finished one level. You come to the management level, you do the same thing. Three papers, sorry, three papers as continuous assessment. Instead of going to the exam center three times, take it as continuous assessment. Then you take the case study, you've completed one level. Then you come to the final level, you do the same thing, continuous assessment for the three papers. Then you do the case study and you've completed. Now, what we have done with the University of Ghana recently, and we signed the agreement with the vice chancellor about two weeks ago, that those of you in the business school doing finance and accounting, you don't even have to start from the scratch. So we have exempted you from our first two levels. You only come in at our management level. You come in at the management level. So at the management level, we have four papers. But I've told you already, now instead of going to the exam center four times, you go once because the three papers have been converted to continuous assessment examinations. So you complete the three continuous assessment papers and you do the case study. Then you go to the final level, do three continuous assessment papers and you do the final case study and you become a SEMA Chartered Management Accountant. And this can be done within one year. So those of you on the call who are going to the third year or level 300, I can assure you that when you start the course at this level, by the time you complete the final, uh, your final year, you would have become a SEMA Chartered Management Accountant because of how flexible the course has become. Because we've made it flexible and we've had a special agreement with the University of Ghana Business School. So business school students, you don't have to go to the exam center eight times. You go to the exam center two times, but you still become a SEMA Chartered Management Accountant. And we have not reduced the level of rigor of the exam. The contents has not um, reduced. It is the uh, method of assessment which has, which has reduced. So that is what we are looking at. So what we are saying with this new course is that you complete end of level exams, that's the case study, all of you, whether you are going through the old system or the new system, you will end up with a case study. Our objective tests have been replaced with what we call knowledge checks. So as you study online, you will go through what we call knowledge checks. So end of topic, you'll do as an assessment test. If you don't pass, you'll have to go back and pass that assessment. Then you'll be doing what we call business simulation assignments. These are practical assignments, just to ensure that when you come to the workplace, you'll be able to apply the knowledge because the knowledge is enough, it's not enough. You need to be able to apply it to situations that confront you when you get to the workplace. So that is the kind of system that SEMA has introduced. So how does it work as I wrap up? Um, the, we call it the SEMA Finance Leadership Program Experience. And it's developed for you guys, especially you guys who love to uh, work on the computers. Sorry, let me go back. So what you do is that you go onto the system and you determine your own entry point. So I will share the website with you. You go to the system and you share your, you start your registration. It will tell you where you are going to start from. But I've told you, University of Ghana students, um, that's finance and accounting students who start from the management level. So you just have to go through, you come and do your case studies and that's it, you become a SEMA. I'll encourage you to visit this website, which is enroll.cg. You can take a screenshot of it and you can join it later, but I'll put it in the chat box. You can go to this website, enroll.cgma.org. This is our digital platform where you can go online, study on your phone, write your continuous assessment on your phone or on your computer, any time, any day, and get yourself prepared to write the final case study. So that is what we have introduced as our SEMA Finance Leadership Program. 
So as we wrap up, I'm asking you the question, are you prepared for the future of finance? Ask yourself genuinely, as you sit today as a level 300 undergraduate, from what I've told you based on the research, are you prepared to face the world? If you are not, at least you guys have two more years to prepare yourself. And I would encourage you strongly to have a look at the website that I shared with you. Go there, check it out. And if you are interested, we'll be happy to have you on board to start your SEMA qualification. If you don't want to become a chartered management accountant, I've said to you already, whatever it is, make sure you come out as a professional. If it's marketing, go and get a marketing qualification. If it is um, banking, go and get a banking qualification, but don't come out with your first degree. The world will shock you big, big, big time. I, um, Ivy, can I play this short video here? Yes, please, Mr. Paul. Okay, so as I wrap up, I just want to share this. Please, we can't hear the audio. Hello. Please, we can't hear the audio. You can't hear? Yes, the audio. We oh, sorry about that. Yeah, let me end it. Okay, sorry about that. You couldn't hear the sound. So as I summarize, what did we discuss today? We spoke about the changes in the business world, the challenges and response of the finance function, the skills and competencies required for the future. And that's what I was talking to you about. You need all those digital skills in addition to your banking degree to be able to find your feet in the workplace. And I've spoken to you about the SEMA Finance Leadership Program. If you want to contact us, my details are here. My email is here and then my phone number, but I will encourage you strongly to go to the website that is enroll.cgma.org, check it out. We've We've also um, agreed a discount package for UGBS graduates. So all of you who are on this call, if you want to join SEMA, you will benefit from a 75% discount on our fees. So you don't have to pay the full fees like anybody around the world. You'll get 75% discount on your fees. So at, and you start also from our third level. So I think that we made it pretty easy and flexible for those of you on this call or your mates to become chartered global management accountants so that you find the workplace a bit more easier. Even if you want to go into your own um, job, I mean, we'll provide you the kind of skill set that you need so that the finance minister will not come back five years time and tell us that our graduates don't have the skills that employers are looking out for. I want to end here. Thank you very much for your time and we can continue the discussion after here. Thank you Ivy for the opportunity. Thank you very much, Mr. Paul. But then I guess there are questions in the um, chat box, so I would like I would like you to address them. Okay, yeah. Let me, go, let me go into the box now. Okay. So there's a question from Georgina Obey. She says, "Sir, please, may I know how we can join SEMA? Also, how do we apply for these courses? And when you are done with these courses, will you get the chartered banking certificate?" Okay. So. Um, I've shared, if you want to join SEMA, I've shared the website address, which is there, enroll.cgme.org. Um, the second part of the question, this will not give you the chartered banking qualification. I'm sure um, if you want to become a chartered banker, you um, talk to um, Chartered Institute of Banking, that is CIB. And I'm sure you, you can just Google them and you can get the information about CIB. So, but Hello. ours is Chartered, chartered Global Management Account. Hello. Hello, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. And then to add up to what Georgina was asking, 
I think Mrs. Naomi Boche would be coming and she is also a member of the Chartered Institute of Bankers. So when she comes, you can direct your question pertaining to the banking certificate to her. Sure, that's fine. Ivy, any other question for me? Yes, please. There's a question from Rebecca Nana Kiyofori. She's asking, please, is it true that SEMA is relatively harder than ACCA or ICA? <laughs> um, good question. Um, we've had this question several times. And the simple answer is that with the right level of preparation, anybody should be able to do SEMA, okay? With the right level of preparation. And I will encourage, um, is it Naki? to go to that uh, website and check it out. And when you go to our website, you can also check out our pass rates and you realize that um, people are passing. A lot of people, even those students who didn't come from the business school, people from sociology, people from other backgrounds have been able to do SEMA and they've gone through easily. I, start, I was in the University of Ghana and I did sociology in 1991, I graduated in sociology and political science. I didn't do any business at all, but I'm a SEMA member. So for those of you in the business school, I think it should be pretty easy for you to become chartered management accountants. I hope I've answered Naki's question. Nothing is too difficult for you, Naki. Hopefully. <laughs> so there, there's a question from Awok Nedu and then and I guess they are the same. No, sorry, Rebecca again. She's asking when is registration opened for the programs? There is, registration is always open because it's online, you can register anytime. And like I told you, because our exams are now um, continuous assessment, you can take the exam any day, anytime, anywhere you find yourself in the world, you can study. So if you register and pay, the moment you make the payment, you are granted access to the learning platform immediately and you can start studying. Okay, thank you very much. And please, Abna wants to know if there are exemptions available for ICAG associates members. Uh, did you say exemptions? Yes, please. Good. Yes, if you graduate from UGBS, you have exemptions. But what we have done, as I said earlier, is that we have now brought it down to undergraduate. So you don't have to graduate to get those exemptions. If you start now at level 300, you will still get the same level of exemptions like those who have graduated. Ms. That is why, yes. Please, she's asking for ICAG associate members. Oh, okay, okay, yes, yes. ICAG associate members, they come in at a very final level and do a final case study. They do a final, a final case study. Is my screen on still? Yes, please. I want to show you, yeah. So if you come with the ICAG, you come to what we call the strategic case study exam. It's just one paper. This is where you start from, just one paper. But if you are coming as an undergraduate of UGBS, you start from the management level. So you will do managing performance, advanced management accounting, advanced financial reporting. Then you do the case study. Then you go to the final level, strategic management, risk management, financial strategy, and you do the final case study. Then you are done with SEMA and you are a chartered management accountant. I hope it's clear. Yes, please. And please, Rhoda wants to ask, um, how different is the SEMA from ICAG and ACCA? Okay, so ICA, ACCA, they train you to become a financial accountant. SEMA trains you to become a management accountant. So yes, we all do the accounting. So see, if you look at this thing here, we do accounting to the very final level, that's advanced financial reporting. What SEMA does after that is that we focus more on strategy at the final level. So you do all the accounting at this level, then when you come to the final level, we train you for strategic leadership positions. And strategy is about day-to-day -day operations and the future of the organization. Financial accounting is about reporting things that have, that, that, things that have happened in the past. So when you prepare your PL and your balance sheet, what are you doing? You are reporting things that happened in the past. Management accounting is about day to day and also preparing you into the future because strategy, as you all are aware, is about what future. So yes, we we'll also do the financial accounting to the highest level, but then we think that looking forward is more important. So management accounting is a bit more 
forward looking. We prepare you for strategy. Okay, that is the uh, one of the major differences between ACCA and ICA. So if you come to me and you ask me which one should I choose, if you want to go into pure auditing, let's say you want to go into as an auditor, I would encourage you to go and do ACCA or ICA. But if you want to work in business, you want to get to the CEO level, CFO level, head of strategy, head of whatever, then CIMA will provide you the kind of skill set that you need. So yes, um, we are all doing accounting, but we prepare you for different um, fields. We are involved in business, ensure that businesses become successful. Financial accountants will, will report what has happened in the past. Okay, so I hope I've answered Rhoda's question. Yes, please. And please, um, Jonathan, Yabo wants to ask which year does CMS partnership with UGBS ends? Um, we signed it for three years. So after three years, it will be reviewed. And if the, based on the performance of the students, we will decide whether to continue or to drop it. But the initial agreement is for three years. So for the three year period that we have, have the agreement, you, you benefit from the 75% discounts. So please go and tell your parents that they, <laughs> they should get, let you start now. And if you are paying for yourself, I would encourage you to start now. Okay, thank you very much. And Mr. Paul, please, Rahel Asavia is asking if the case studies are done online as well. Um, the case studies are computer-based. You know, all CIMA exams are, are computer-based. So yes, it's computer based. And one good thing that we've also introduced that you can do the exam anywhere. So let's say you, you are home on vacation and you come from, let's say, Dunkurugu Yongyo, where you don't have an exam center. So long as you have internet in your area, you can sit in the comfort of your bedroom and take the CIMA case study examination. You understand? So even if you are traveling, you can stop somewhere and take your CIMA examination so long as there's internet. You don't have to go to the exam center. However, if you have an exam center close to you, you can always go. There's an exam center just at the University of Ghana traffic lights. And we have some of them all over the place. Kumasi, we have centers, we have Takrade. But if you don't have a center where you are, don't be bothered. You can write your case study exam in your office, in your bedroom, in your hall, anywhere. That is how advanced we've gone with our examinations. Okay, thank you very much. And Ruda has a question, but I guess it has been answered. Dexindo is asking, is it really necessary for UG students, that's business school students, to start from the management level of CIMA, even if they want to start from the operational level? Um, good question. Yes, you have the choice to start from the operational level. In fact, you realize that with the agreement that we had with UG, we, the management level was limited to those of you doing accounting and finance based on what we think you guys have studied. However, if you want, um, but for those doing the other courses, they will start them at the operational level. However, if you think that we are starting at a management level and that level is too high and advanced for you, you can opt to go down. The other thing is that if you sign up, we give you access to all the three levels, the operational level, management level, and strategic level. So even if you are starting at the management level, you will have access to the information at the operational level. So just in case something um, at the operational level is not clear, you can go back and read it without even writing the exam. So let's say you are doing advanced management accounting at the management level, but you know we are building on. You can go back to um, P1, which is management accounting, and go and read and gather the knowledge and come and um, use it at the management level. So those are the options. Option one is that you can decide that I don't want to start at the management level. I want to start at the operational level, which is fine. It means that in total, you will take three case studies, that's all. Alternatively, you will start at the management level, but because you have access to the information at the operational level, you can always go down there and refresh your knowledge. And you also have access to the strategic level. So once you finish the management level, you can quickly go to the strategic level and complete it. And it can be done within one year because people have done it already in this country. I hope I've answered the question. Yes, please. I guess that's all the questions from the chat box. Um, all right, thank you very much, everybody. And thanks, Ivy. 
Um, you can always reach me. I think I left my, I'll leave my email address here as well so that anybody who wants to reach me can always contact me. I'll leave my phone number also. So if you want to reach me, please feel free to reach me. Anytime you WhatsApp me. Okay, so thank you very much for the opportunity. And I hope to hear from all of you very soon. Thank you, Ivy, for organizing such a great program. Thank you very much, Mr. Po and Nakwa. We are very much grateful unto you for such an opportunity. And looking forward, we will be glad to have you speak more on more of our programs. Anytime, just reach out to me. Thank you very, very much. Thank you. Too. Okay, so um, that was Mr. Paul Nakwa from Sema Chartered Institute of Management Accountants. Please, I hope we are clear with this one. Um, so for the level, if you, now I don't know if I should call you guys 300 or yes, I mean your perspective level 300. So um, I realized that you guys have a lot of questions with um, the courses you're supposed to do for next semester and how difficult these questions are and all that. Would we have having Mrs. Naomi, she's from the banking sector, but then she'll be on at 11.30. So for now, we'd like to address all the questions you have pertaining to the courses that we'll be doing, you guys would be doing next semester. That's um, for BSc finance, banking and finance students. So um, I would call Aram, he's the vice president for Finster for City Campus to take over. Aaron, please, you can take over. Very well. Good morning. I hope you are all fine. Yes, please. Okay. So, as prospective level 300 BSEA finance students, it is advisable you should know the courses you'll be doing next semester and also in level 400 so that you can at least read ahead before school resumes. So for level 300 first semester, these are the courses you would be doing. You'll be doing a quantitative method, which, which is a general course that when every business school student is expected to, to do it. The second one you'll be doing is your Introduction to business finance. Introduction to business finance, that one is a finance course. It's solely a finance course. We'll be doing finance one in the first semester of level 300. And also you'll be doing principles of marketing. So what I want you to understand here is that for your level 300, for every semester, you'll be doing just one or two finance courses. So for level 300, first and second semester, you'll be doing just one or two finance courses. And for the first semester, the only finance course you'll be doing is your introduction to business finance. You'll be doing principles of marketing from the marketing department and also uh, human introduction to human behavior and organization from the human resource department. And also you'll be doing two UGBS courses. When I say UGBS courses, these courses are mandatory to every business school student to partake. So these courses are the quantitative methods and computer applications and management. And also as finance students, you would have the option to choose between any other elective. When we say elective, we are saying that these courses are not mandatory. You can decide to choose from either marketing department, accounting department, or human resource department. So as finance students, you have the option to choose free elective in your level 300 first semester. And the second semester, you'll be doing courses such as Business Finance 2, which is a finance course, Managerial Economics, which is also a finance course. You'll be doing Human Resource Management, which is a human, a human Resource Department course. And also you'll be doing, hold on. One second. 
I hope you are writing them now anyway. And also you'll be doing fundamentals of entrepreneurship from the marketing department and another UGBS course, which is research methods. Here again, you are supposed to choose another free elective. Are you okay? You can choose from the marketing department or any other department you wish to choose your free elective from. And this particular semester, I remember me and myself choosing production management from the OMIS department. So that is it for your level 300 courses. I hope you are all with me. I'll be sharing, I'll be sharing the, um, the courses with you as in the, in the picture form. Yes. Aduma, you can ask your question. And please, my question is, do you need to have a financial background before you do banking and finance, just as the accounting students, almost everyone, those who did business in SHS, almost everyone is going in for accounting. So my question okay. is, do we also have to get some financial background not financial background per se, but maybe before you do finance, you have to, you should have done business and EMAT in school, something like that. Do you have, is it, do you need those things before you major in banking and finance? Thank you. Very well. You don't need any of those things before you do finance in, in the University of Ghana. Me, for instance, I wasn't, a business student in SHS. I was a science student, okay? But finance is one cause that you don't need any prior knowledge. In exception of what you've been taught in level 100 and 200. It's not something like you've, you need to be taught in secondary school before you can do it. Finance, like I just said earlier, for level 300, for instance, the only finance course you'll be doing is your business finance one. The rest of the courses you'll be doing as a finance student are from other departments. This should tell you that you don't need any prior, any significant prior knowledge before you do finance. Do we understand? Adoma, is that clear? Yes, please. And I also learned finance is difficult, like it's difficult. Please, who's, who told you it's difficult? Please, a friend of mine said that that it's better to choose accounting because that one you've done accounting one, accounting two. At least you have a fair knowledge. On I, I want I want to understand some basic facts here. Accounting one and accounting two, they just give you the premises to able to see whether you can do accounting. But I can assure you that all the things you be doing in accounting department has least correlation with accounts one and two. And also, people say finance is difficult because in fact, if everything is difficult until you start learning it, are you okay? Everything is difficult until you start learning it. If you learn it, it becomes easy. To be very honest, finance is one of the easiest courses you can do in the University of Ghana. It's very easy. And I'm saying this because I'm there. A lot of people say finance is difficult. Meanwhile, they've not even tried it before. They, they are saying it because someone told them, are you okay? And if you don't believe, if you don't delete this superstitious belief or this assumption from your head, you might not even be able to, to, to do certain things in life. So don't really take what people are saying into consideration about finance to be true without trying it. Finance is one very easy. You can even ask the president. Okay, so can I move on? Yes, please. Uh, okay, I don't so know that why, is it. why they feel um, finance is difficult. I mean, in level 300, it's more or less like all of us in the business school, accounting, finance, HR, um, insurance, all of us are basically doing similar courses. I mean, accounting students who do quantitative methods, finance students who also do quantitative methods. So where does difficult play a role here? I mean, if there's, there's, there's no 
easy course in business school, trust me, or in the University of Ghana, every course is equally difficult. So um, I don't think putting that notion of difficulty in your minds would help. If you really want to do finance, you can do it. I mean, it's not difficult. I wouldn't say it's difficult. If you sit and practice with determination, you can do it, trust me, Dixon. <laughs> You can do it, okay. Me, for instance, like this. I'll, when you go to level 200 second sem, that is going to level 300. A lot of people were thinking I'll do accounting, but then I had to choose finance because for accounting, for you to be able to be very effective in accounting, you need prior knowledge. Are you okay? You have to know that to be able to balance this this account must come here. There's that form of what rigidity in accounting. But for finance, you don't need any of those things. Everything you need to know will be taught freshly in class. Are you okay? So you don't, as of now, you don't know anything about bonds. When the lecturer comes and he wants to teach you something about bond evaluation, he's going to teach you everything from scratch. But most of these accounting classes and lectures, they, they teach on prior knowledge. So if you, they expect you to know some basic stuff of, about accounting, but for finance, there's nothing like that. Are you okay? That even makes the finance easier as compared to what accounting. Hello. Hi. Hello. Yes, I would also want to add a bit to what Aram said. Okay. Um, when I got to the university and then I was given finance and the various combinations because I'm a BA student. I did my inquiries, okay? And then one thing uh, a man in the academic office told me was, my dear girl, it is not about you want to do this, you want to do that. Everything is about determination, okay? And that is what I want to leave with all of you. Everything in this world is difficult. Nothing comes easy. But so far as you have the spirit of determination, you would be able to achieve it, okay? So don't put it in your mind that finance is difficult. No, no, just see it as I have to work extra hard. I have to work towards achieving my A's and that is basically it. And then finance is about principles, okay? Once you have been taught the principle and you understand this very well, Every question you meet, you can solve that question, but then make sure that your basics are right. That is all that I can add to it. Thank you. Okay, before I start taking your questions, let me finish the courses you'll be doing in level 400, first semester and second semester respectively. So for your level 400 first semester, you'll be doing courses such as company law, investment fundamentals, bank management, banking operations, public finance, and you would have an elective. You have the option to choose between offering a course or doing your long AC. And the course you'll be offering is labor economics or you do your long AC. Any of them will constitute just three, uh, six credit hours. Now, in your level 400 second semester, you'll be doing courses such as business policy, monetary theory, international finance and banking, financial markets, and microfinance. Upon successful completion of these courses, you are qualified to be called a finance graduate. Now, let me go to the comment section and take your question. The first person is asking, why should we want to do finance over other UGBS offerings? Okay, now I would like to draw the battle between finance and accounting because for marketing, I believe we can all market on any day, right? If I give you a product to go and sell on the street, I believe we can all sell, right? So for marketing, I won't talk about marketing. For HR, for HR, HR is a very crucial discourse as well, but they don't even have courses if you do a child now the question is um in a year or how many organizations do we have in ghana 
how many of them will need HR personnel to be hiring and recruiting personnel for them? If you are able to answer that question correctly, that will also guide you on whether to do HR or not. One also one good department also is your um, public health. For that one, it's a very good department. But the question is, how many hospitals do we have in Ghana? And how many administrators do we need in that regard? So now I'm going to draw the battle line between accounting and finance. For accounting, like the same representative said here clearly, their work is likely to be done by the robots or artificial intelligence, like the man rightly said, because most of what they do is rigid. Are you okay? They have one pattern of doing things, always when you want to draw your income statement, this is how we go about it. But finance, we are not interested in drawing all those things. We are interested in making strategic decisions. We are interested in making decisions, interpreting the financial statements and income statements produced by the accountants. And you know that we live in a very dynamic world. We live with people. We are working with people. Tastes and preferences of people change day by day, which means that the decision I will make with regards to how to finance a project today will be different from the decision I'll be making tomorrow because of the dynamic nature of human beings. So in as much as I would say accounting is, accounting is important, I would say finance is more important because of the fact that we are working with people that are dynamic. That means that artificial intelligence or robots cannot make such decisions as we are saying. Do we get it? On this note, I would like Ivy to add up to what I just said about this. Ivy, can you add a bit, uh, a little bit of flesh to what I just said? Madam President. Yes, please, Aaron. Uh -huh. Can you add a bit of flesh to what I just said? Well, I guess you've, you've said everything. I mean, if we are looking at the future okay we we are not just looking at now or two years after school well in accounting that could be it but then if you want to study finance you are looking at say five years from after school or third years we look as as Aram said we look at strategies what what to do in the near future so um why wouldn't you want to do finance <laughs> I mean, but most, okay, let me, I think there are questions in the chat box. Regina is asking, please, I want to know your view on choosing to write a long essay in level 400 because I heard it's better since you'd meet it again if you decide to do your master's at first. Yes, so for um, Georgina, so for um, level, so long essays are usually done in level 400, okay? And all departments do long essays every department, well, you decide to do, you decide, it's a decision, a personal decision. But then <clears throat> we are BSc students, most of us here are BSc students. So um, I think it's it's a choice for BA students from the finance departments, we do not write long essays, but for BSc students, it's a choice. And also, if you want to, um, do your master's, okay? You would need to do your long essay. And that's why it's important to do um, your long essay in level 400. So it's a condition. If you want to do your master's, eventually you do a long essay. So why not do it whilst you're in school when you have supervisors supervising you and all that? Because when you are moving out there, you want to do your master's. No one will supervise you. I mean, you are doing everything on your own. But if you don't want to do masters, if you don't have um, the sort of furthering your education, why not? It, it's all dependent on you. So if you don't do a long essay, you choose a course from business school or from the department. Yes. And okay. So to, to add up sure. to that, to add up to that, so when you came from level hundred, right? You've been reading the slides and writing examinations and getting your A's. So it is assumed that from level 100 to 300, you know how to read slides and pass questions, right? Now, you deciding to 
do your long essay is it's a very good thing. In other words, you are trying to learn something new. And you trying to do your long essay means you are going more into academia. Because if you want to go into academia, you have to know how to write a long essay. You have to know how to develop the thesis, which is the grandfather of what long essay. Are you okay? So I will urge you all to do something new. You can't just come to the University of Ghana and learn how to read course, read, do Babadier and go and pass. No, it's no good. So try and see whether you can develop your writing skill. Try and see whether you can find, look more into your problem. What are your discoveries? Are you okay? Doing that as a student gives you an advantage, advantage over the rest, people who didn't do it. Are you okay? So you tend to learn how to, to, to research and develop thesis. And also, if you do a long essay, it's, it kind of gives you the opportunity. If you want to travel abroad, in fact, it's one of the requirements. You have to do a long essay. Like I said, no, I didn't say it. If you, have to, if you want to travel after your undergrad, then it is, it is very good for you to do a long essay. Okay, so that is all I would like to add to what Madam President said. So try and do something new by doing a long essay. Don't just come to the University of Ghana and read a slice and go and write exam. No, try and do something new by just trying the long essay. Thank you. Um, just when Nyam Nyam Pong, sorry if I don't mention your name, right? Is asking if <laughs> banking and finance is just associated to banks and microfinance companies. Oh, okay. So, like the question, like like the, the title of the course. What does the course say? Banking and what finance? Is it only finance uh, banks and then micro? Uh, is it micro? Uh, micro finance companies. Yes. Yes, is it only banks and microfinance companies that deal with finance? I'm asking the lady the question. I want her to respond. Justin, please. Okay, if she's not answering, let me just go on. So, like our the name of the course is banking and finance. We are interested in any organization at all that has something to do with finance, making decisions about how to invest in the project, how not to invest in the project, how to make financial decision needs a banking and finance student. So not just banks and micro finance companies. Sure. Please comment on that. So as long as the company needs people to make decisions about whether to invest in a particular project or to make financial decisions, then we need a finance student or a banking and finance student to do such things. Thank you. Akwesi is saying that um, but most, most of the lecturers in the finance department did their first, <laughs> did their first degree in accounting. I think I'll answer this question. Yes, please do that for me. Please, the question again. You see, Akwesi initially asked why we should choose finance over the other business courses, and Eram and I answered. And he's okay. making, um, making another claim that most of the lecturers in the finance department are business schools. They did their first degree in accounting. Okay. So basically, finance is greater than accounting. That's one. And two, to be a good finance professional, you should have a good background in accounting, okay? That's why mostly you see people read first degree accounting and their masters and then PhD, they go further to choose finance because to become a good financial analyst, you need to know your income statements, statements of financial position, cash flow and all that. So that when the accountant prepares it and brings it to you for you to interpret as a financial analyst, you will know what you are about. Um, does that answer the question? Okay, see. And, and also, as at the time, in fact, I, this is the chicken answer, but I was just, <laughs> I was just hey, saying, hey, <laughs> as at the time, they were choosing accounting. The, the robots were not taking over them. Are you okay? But now they are taking over. So you have to choose wisely. Those lecturers, they did accounting back in the 90s. Now we are in 2021 where robotics and artificial intelligence is taking over. So you have to choose wisely. When they realized that, okay, the work of the accountant is going to be taken over by the robotics and all that, they decided to venture into finance. You understand? Common sense, 
Um, okay, so I hope the lady is asking if um, BA students do the same courses as BSc students next semester. So um, for BA, BA students, okay, you realize that we take courses, we have our own course, so maybe um, finance and Swahili or finance and information studies or finance and any other course, okay. We take courses from um, business, so we we'll take um, introduction to business finance, we we'll take principles of marketing, and then we we'll take computer applications and management. So for BA students in level 300, um, first semester, these are the courses we'll be taking, introduction to business finance, principles of marketing, and computer applications, plus your other courses from the other departments, so maybe from side departments, maybe from information studies departments, maybe from um, math departments. Please, I hope the question has been answered. Um, I can see asking, are these finance graduates the ones who become bank tellers? A question for bank tellers, in fact, any other person from any academic discipline can become a bank teller, provided you are given the right orientation. But we are looking at ourselves making finance, crucial financial decisions, not becoming bank tellers. And also to add to that, um, I know to become a bank teller, okay, there are those who read the other courses, psychology, sociology. I know one lady, she's in APSA, she did theater arts, okay, she was a bank teller. And then they later placed her in sales and she was doing well because of her marketing skills. Then they promoted her. And so if you meet the bank tellers, I'm sorry, but it's not those who read banking and finance who are the bank tellers. No. When you get to the bank, they feel that, okay, this person read banking and finance. So let me give that, let me place that person under operations. Let me place that person under um, probably something else. The person can be under marketing because you have the knowledge. Okay, but the sociology, linguistics people, are uh, normally the tellers. Okay, yes. And please, is that all the questions we have? Okay, she's asking, so out of the company law and banking operations, does your decision affect your career path? I don't think the question is clear. Okay, now. so um, for company law and then banking operations, okay, well, it doesn't really affect your career path. If you're going to do company law, then you want to gain uh, knowledge about uh, how the legal system is in a company. Okay, so when you end up in a company, you know that, okay, maybe they are going to share their things pro rata when the company is liquidated. Pro rata means, yeah, excuse my language. Okay, so if you, if you, if you feel interested in um, company law, or you want to gain more knowledge about company law, and then you, you would want to know how companies run their stuff in terms of the legal system, then probably you choose company law. But if indeed you want to know the treasury sector uh, and how uh, the, 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 the saving surplus units and the deficit surplus units in the bank works, how the Bank of Ghana uses the camel approach to you know, analyze um, banks, their sites of monitoring, on-site, off-site, money laundering and all that, then probably you can choose banking operations. Thank you. So it's more about the knowledge you would want to gain because at the end of the day, you are still having a banking and finance degree, but it's about the knowledge you would want to gain. Yes, thank you very much. Thank you, Asantua. Um, Asantua is the organizing secretary for FinSA. Yes. Um, Agnes, 
about sorry if I don't mention it. And um, Erin, please, Agnes is saying that she was locked out because of her network. So if you could elaborate more on the long essay once again. So I was saying that right from the first day you came to the University of Ghana, you were reading slides and writing exam, right? Good. Now, you long essays are more of academic work. When you start writing your long essay, you, in, a, in actual sense, you are going more into academia. Are you okay? So in level 400, you are offered the opportunity to choose whether to write your long essay or still go your normal way of reading slides and pass. And I'm saying that it is very good you take advantage of that opportunity by doing your long essay. Are you okay? Because it has a lot of advantages. Number one, if you don't want to further your education after first degree, fine. But if you want to, this would give you a good ground to be able to write, write your long essay at the master's level. And also, if you want to travel abroad, they need you to write long essay at your undergraduate level. So in, in, in short, I'm just saying that the long essay is a very good thing to do. And I'll urge all of you to do it when you get to level 400 if you have the strength to do so. Thank you. Thank you very much, Aram. Um, please. So it's 11.30 and then would like to call on um, Mr. Naomi Bochi Amatiako, Amatiako, sorry, if I mentioned the name wrongly. Please, she says we should give her five minutes and she'll be with us shortly. Yes, please. Okay, um, Ibrahim is asking, is that a group work concerning the long essay or everyone has to do his own? So, um, Ibrahim, so for the finance department, so for um, students in the finance department, our long essays are done in groups, but for other departments, it's done individually. For finance students, we do, the BSc students do their long essays in groups of four, so four people in a group, we choose one topic and then do their long essay. But then for other departments, accounting, um, HR and all that, they do their long essays individually. And for, <laughs> and for finance, um, there has been changes in the way we do our, uh, or in the people that do their long essays. So as a level 300, second, sec, yes, second semester, um, if you'd want to, if you're a BSc student and you'd want to do your long essay in level 400, you'd have to be in the second class upper or first class to be able to do your long essay. That's for finance students only. I hope I've answered your question. Um, Alfred, as uh, is this the only moment you can reach out for guidance and counseling? No, please. Um, anytime you share communicates or on that WhatsApp platform, that's the BSC level 300 page, we are always available. So, myself and the other executives are available. When we share communicates, to, our numbers are attached to them, so you can reach out to us anytime anytime to, um, for guidance and counsel.
and we will address the questions soon. Please hold it. Hello, everyone. Hello. Hi. Yes. Hi. Yes. Uh, I think Mrs. Boche is ready. Hello, Naomi. Mrs. Boche. Yeah, hi, guys. Hello, Naomi. Hello, good morning. Good morning. So everyone, Thank you. yes, we are very privileged to have one big woman from GT Bank come and talk to us. Okay, so we'll leave the rest to her. And thank you once again, Naomi, for honoring our invitation. So thank you too. You're welcome. So it's time for Naomi to talk to us. Please let's do well to listen. And if we have any questions, let's drop them in the chat box and she would answer all our questions. Thank you. Okay, so I hope you're all fine. Yes, please, we are. We are very fine. Okay, so please, a little correction. The name is Amati Oko. Yes. And yeah, I'm a staff of GT Bank. I came in as entry level. And I know, yeah, you guys have some confusion about should I do accounting? Should I do finance? Like, what should I do? But the main question I'm supposed to ask yourself is what do I want to use the course I'm doing for once I leave Legon? You're not going to stay in Legon your whole life. By all means, the four years will be done and you're going to leave Legon. So once you're done with Legon, what do you want to do next? And we keep forgetting that every institution in Ghana, every company need a finance officer, be it NGO, be it whether I'm making profit or not, to see someone 
at the finance side to manage your affairs. Did you get it? Yes, yes, Hello. please. Yes, please. Okay. So um, I'm an old student of Legon, and I didn't do finance, neither did I do banking or I wasn't in a business school. I did psychology and information studies. And right now, um, our society is not, yeah, they are concerned about the courses they did in school, but they're also concerned about your grades, the class you came out with. So you can come out with, you can be in the business school, come out with a third class, I can be in an art school or art class and then come with first or upper. They'll surely go for me. So when I came, I came into um, GT Bank through entry level, that was right after service. And yeah, I have friends who were in the business school. I said that that wasn't enough. There may be some time that they'll try to lay people off and you may not know. They'll go through your sets and they may see that okay, you're an accident. As much as you are performing well, they may also look at your qualification when picking you. So I decided to go to CIB to get more knowledge about banking and stuff and also be a professional banker. So the next when they are going through uh, stuff, I know that, yeah, I qualify to be in the banking institution. And some people are asking whether you need this whole background before you can do some other things. I don't know whether I got that question right. You don't necessarily need maybe accounting background or any of those background. I did business in SHS, but that was all. I didn't do any other business courses so I went to the CIB. And I have met a CIB who did not do anything relating to banking, anything relating to accounting, but they are still in CIB, they are almost done with the course actually. And they also come out to be professional bankers. And so, someone asked a question, and you guys said you died to me. I don't want to spend much of your time. Uh, yes. I have a little. Uh, Naomi, here. she was asking about the chartered banking certificate. Then I told her that you are also at CIB, so you would talk briefly on that. You know, when Mr. Paul was talking, he said that if you want to be um, a professional marketer, you should, you know, enroll with um, Chartered Marketing Institute. If you want to be a professional banker, you should enroll with Chartered Banking, you know, Institute. So since you're a member over there, I wanted to direct that question to you. Okay, so about CIBM. I feel, sorry, when you take your transcript to them, there are certain courses that you'll be exempted. I wasn't in the business school, as I said, actually. So I wasn't exempted for any of the courses. I had to start from level one. So once you go in as a business student, there are certain courses that you won't do. You don't have to do it. Or maybe you may not even be in level one. You may not have to start from level one. You may go straight to level two. Please, you get it. Hello. Yes, please. We are here. Okay. So I hope I've answered that question. Yeah, the question has been answered. I'm sure Georgina yes. would pick it up from here. And I want to add to Mr. Paulson, you see, you need more knowledge, you need to acquire more, you need to better yourself. You don't just have to finish Legon and think, okay, I have my first degree in finance, so yeah, I can go and all those things. No, you need to add on to what you have. You can go to CIMA, you can go to accounting, you can go to CI, but you still need to add on to something. You can do your master's, don't settle with your first degree. It won't help, seriously. It's not going to help out. Because now there are a lot of unemployment, like unemployed graduates, there are a lot of them. And I pray I'm not part of them. So once either whilst in school, you can still be adding on or right after school, try and then add on. And also make contact with people. It's people who are going to help you out. 
you can't do everything on your own. You can't, um, yeah, you can't do everything on your own. You need people to help you out. It was a colleague who helped me with GT Bank. I didn't know they were like looking for staff or anything. I didn't know anything about that. It was a colleague who called me and I was doing my service. I didn't wait to finish national service before looking for job. Right during my service, I was making contact with people. I was trying to make friends and everything. Yeah, I know what I'd wanted. So while I was making, although I was making friendship, I still needed something at the end of it. I needed a job. So I'll talk to you, oh, this and this and that. Oh, your company, do they need staff? Can I do this for you? Can I do that? Can I lend this? Try to upgrade yourself. Try to make contact. Every contact is not too small. Your friends are there. Make, like, get into contact with big, big people. And that is going to help you a lot. It's going to help you in the near future. I don't know who you are going to meet somewhere. And whilst you're doing your service or whilst in school, start the contact rise from there. Don't think your colleague is not going to help you or anything. Your colleague is a bigger opportunity that you need to grab. Please get it. Hello. Hello, Naomi, please, we are here. We had everything. Please, we are here. So, yeah. please, I'd like to take questions from you guys. Like, I have a meeting that I have to rush back to that meeting. So I'll take questions so that I can go back to that meeting. Okay, I beg if I didn't spend more time with you guys. Regina, please, you can talk. Um, hello. Yeah, hi, yeah. Okay, please, I want to ask how I can um, join the CIB, like register for it. Georgina. Okay, thank you. Georgina. Yes. I'll drop my contact in the chat box. And now will you answer it or I wanted her to, you know, call me and they will take it up from there. But sure. Sure, I'm okay if with you it. want to answer it. No, I'm okay with that. You're okay with that. Okay, so Georgina, I'll drop my contact in the chat box. Call me and let's talk about it, okay? Okay, thank you very much. You are very welcome. You are very much welcome. Um, sorry, please, is that all the questions? Uh, good morning, Naomi. You said you, uh, you got into GT Bank at the entry level. What do you mean by the entry level? The entry level is, I didn't come as, um, let's say, Entry level, you start from EA. They pick you as, like, once you graduate from school, they just pick you. So there's no, I had, how should I, I don't know how to put on the right word to use. So I entered GT right after service. Did you get it? And entry level, they have certain things that they look out for. That's your age. And then some other petty things. I did not work at any institution to um, gain any, um, I'm not guessing the right word. I want someone to help me out. So, um, hi. Hello. Hello, please, we can hear you. So, so normally for entry level positions, right after national service, you are employed, you can you can call that as an entry level job. Yes, yeah, so or no your first job. You. Yeah, you don't you don't have any experience. So yeah, that's normally, what I was looking for please. All right, all right. Okay, uh can you please tell us the position you held uh, during that period? Like what was the position you were holding? Like uh what is that? 
I mean, what position did you hold that period? What exactly were you doing for GT Bank? I'm a marketer. Right now, all the banks, eh, they are more focused on people bringing them monies and other things. They're focused on people who bring business. So most often, they don't really pick people for operations. All their focus is centered on marketers, marketers, marketers. So I came as a marketer. Did you get it? Okay. As a relation officer. Yeah. Well, hello. Yeah, hello. Yes, please, you get it. You, okay, so you're no longer a marketer right now. No, I'm still a marketer. Marketer does not necessarily mean, when people say marketers, people have this feeling that, okay, I'll see you in the sun, I'll see you doing this. No, you are looking for businesses, you're looking for new customers on board. It can be oh. in retail, it can be an SMB, it can be corporate, all those people are marketers. You sell your product to others. You know, uh, bankers are more into selling money and making more money. So how would you go out there and then sell your business, sell your services to others? Oh, okay. Can you get me? Yeah, I get you. And marketers, so, we don't only go out. We also do other things. We do operational stuff. We also go out there to market our bank's products to others. Oh, okay. If you want to succeed in the banking field, you really, it's better. Yeah, let me say that. It's better to be at the marketing department. <laughs> really? But it's, it's funny, but it's true. Oh, okay. You see, most of the Nigerian banks, but in most of the Nigerian banks, they are more focused on your performance. They are not looking at people who come there and then do the same ordinary thing. If you need a CIS or if you need a teller, I can just be in my cage and be serving customers. That's what I'll be doing every day. Do you get it? Okay. My marketers try to bring new ideas, new stuff to keep the, what is the, name, the business going. Every bank needs to mm -hmm. make a profit to pay its staff. So if you are a marketer and you're bringing new ideas, you're making them grow their profit. Okay, Why not? You. you keep getting promotions here and there. But if you're in the operations, they feel reluctant in promoting you. The local banks, yeah, maybe your qualifications may give you in and out. But for the Nigerian banks or the other banks, other international banks, to succeed, you need to be in the bank, uh, the marketing team side. Okay. And Etila, how you'd be called after taking the SEMA course? And Mr. Paul was the one that. But, okay, one more question. You said you went in as a marketer and you are still a market. Yes, boss. Hello. Okay, please, we can't hear you. And so other thing, if you want to be a good marketer, you need to have finance and then banking um, certificates. You need to have the knowledge and all those things. As I said, it's not just about going out to market your product. It's also about doing your balance sheets, getting your figures in place. Every customer you manage, you have their details that you need to make calculations for, need to put it, uh, what's the name, in book. Please you get it. So every deposit that comes, every transactions that you do, you all need to put them down. Please, are we here? Yes, please, we are here. Is there any question? Please, you were answering my question. 
Please what's the question again? How, how will you be called after taking the CIMARM course? Um, Etila. How will you be? Yeah. Etila. Yes, so um, after taking the C the SEMA course, um, you'd be called an associate. So you're an associate of the Chartered Institute of um, Management Accountants. Okay, Ivy, let oh, me help you. Please. Yes, please. This is Osman, the country business development manager for SEMA. So yes. when you are done with SEMA, you will get what we call ACMA, CGMA. That is Associate Chartered Management Accountant and Chartered Global Management Accountant. Okay. And it's not the same as Chartered Accountant. We have a chartered accountant whose focus is more on tax and audit. And we have a chartered management accountant. You are all chartered accountants, but uh, your rules are a bit uh, slightly different. One is more focused on technicalities and the other one is more broader. That is a managing accountant because you are dealing with things that have to deal with uh, creating and preserving value and actually bringing in more for the organization to grow, rather than just looking at past event, what has happened, then you, you report on that. You get it? Yes. So for yeah. a management accountant, you have a broader view. What it means is that you have a bit of understanding in finance, you have management, you have operations, you have IT, uh, all built into the courses that you, 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 you learn. But more of the chartered accountant who is a technical financial accountant, they are more focused on looking at audit and tax. What has happened in the past and uh, how do we report it back to the stakeholders? But the manager and accountant look at what happened in the past, how does it impact our current situation and how would we be able to change things in order to change the whole ecosystem for the organization into the future? So they are more, more like bringing in the resources, the revenue, that's our thinking. Our own is not about reporting what we have already spent. We are looking at how do we bring in more, sustain the organization, and make it run for years. Thank you very much, Mr. Osman. Very grateful. And please, Naomi, if you are still here, Dixon, wants to ask, Dixon is asking, please, I heard in the banking sector, there's a banker and a bank worker. He's asking if you could please help him with that if you have any knowledge about it. The question again. He's saying that he heard that in the banking sector, there's a banker and a bank worker. So a banker and a bank worker. <laughs> yes. That's I don't get that question seriously. Um, Vixen, please. Is it contract staffs and permanent staffs? Vixen, please. The, the, the question is quite vague because banker and then bank worker, I mean, it's quite vague. What Dixon, does he want to kindly on so what yourself. I know is, hello. Please, you are listening. Trained bankers are, those who are trained are called bankers. So once you become a qualified banker, then you're a banker. I don't know if that's what he wants to know. Hello. Dixon, please, if you are here, kindly unmute yourself and then speak. Hello, Dixon, are you there? Hello. Please ask your question. Um, please, I heard um, um, without the CIB, you are just a bank worker, not a banker. And then with the CIB, uh -huh. you're a bank you are coming clear now. You are coming clear with your question. Yeah. Continue. No, I just want to know if um, I heard from um, someone who works in the banking sector that um, okay. without the CIB, Without the CIB, you are just a bank worker. Mm -hmm. And then with the CIB, you're a banker. So I just want to know more about, I didn't get a chance to, you know, ask him about. Okay. Okay. So if you are interested 
in banking and you want to become a professional banker because CIB is an institute for chartered bankers. So they will train you, all right? You take the test, you write the exams and all that. But in the learning of the various labels, you are being trained to become a professional banker. So when you are done, you'll be called an associate of the Chartered Institute of Bankers. And that is the highest and then the gold standard for a professional banker. So obviously you can't compare someone who went to CIB to someone who didn't go to CIB. And so obviously if someone from CIB is in the bank, the person is actually a trained banker than someone who didn't attend CIB, all right? It's just like someone um, enrolling with ACC or ICA and then someone just having an accounting degree or not having any the um, knowledge in accounting, working in an auditing firm. They would see the person with the ACCA degree as a trained auditor in terms of financial accounting than someone who doesn't have the ACCA. Does that answer your question? Yes, please, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so um, I think there's... Uh, there's a question from Eunice. Please, Eunice would answer that question. Um, if there's no other question, I would like us to thank Naomi. Naomi, please, thank you very much for your time. We are very grateful. And um, we have to move to the next speaker because there's also an emergency has happened too. Thank you guys too. Have a nice day. Have a nice day, Naomi. Have a nice day, Naomi. Okay, um, so the next person we have to speak to us is um, Evans Asante. So Evans is a graduate trainee with ASIS Pensions Group. Um, he served as the financial secretary for Mensa Sabah Hall um, from 2019 to 2021. Um, Evans loves football and he likes to read. It. So um, Evans will be speaking on financial um, Exam professional examinations for finance personnel. So I'll share Evans. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I'm sharing the screen. What the person is saying with regards to. Um, hello, good afternoon. Good afternoon. So, thank you, Ivy, and the other executives for this opportunity. Hope you guys can hear me, please. Yes, please. Yeah, so, um, my session is going to be a very short one. I'll be talking about professional certification for finance students. So normally, most of us just complete school and we think, yeah, that's all. We are just going to make some good money, some good fortune with our degrees here and there, but then that is a fallacy. You need something to rely on. You need a professional certificate to ride on. You need something that will help you grow your career very well. That's why it's important for us to know this. So the outline for today will be for us to know why we need a professional certification. Then we look at some professional certification courses for finance students. Then I talk about some freebies and 
I take your questions, then I'll be out of here. So I think in the next 15 minutes, I should be done with this session. Can you please move to the next slide? Yeah, the next one. Yes, so a professional certificate program usually consists of focusing training for a specific career. So let's say you are, you want to be a journalist, you have to go to GIJ to get a professional certificate. You want to be an accountant, you have to join either ACCA, ITA or SEMA. You want to be a medical doctor after you are done with your six years in school. It will be good for you to join the College of Surgeons at Ridge. Then you you get to get all this professional education that you need. We also in the finance field, it's very important that we get access to such certification for us to work very well. You may be wondering why you may need a professional certificate for you to try well in the corporate world. So here are some of the reasons I listed. There are a lot of them, but I listed only six. The first reason is it demonstrates commitment to your profession. Whenever an individual certifies his or himself to a particular profession, it means that the person is what is committed to their chosen career, along with how well you perform to set standards. It, it sets you apart as a leader in your field. So you go to an investment company and you realize that two people are investment analysts, but one has a CFE certification and the other person is just working with a Bachelor of Science degree from finance. Whenever it comes to decision making, they are going to resort with a person who has the CFE certification because of what his commitment to the profession. They feel that he's committed to that particular profession. That's why he has started to be a certified financial analyst. Another reason is it improves your career opportunities and your advancement. Now, whenever you, you, you are able to certify yourself or charter in a particular profession, it gives you the edge when you are being considered for promotion. Or other career opportunities. It's clearly, it clearly identified. It's clearly. Hello. Hello. Please, we can hear you. I see. Okay. Okay. Sure. Sure. So it's it's it clearly identifies you as an employee um, who can adapt to changes in work technology, business practices, and and innovation. And another reason is it prepares you for a greater on the job opportunity or responsibilities. So normally certifications are voluntary professional commitment. You decide that you are committed to an industry or a field of knowledge. It is also a clear indication of your willingness to invest in your own professional development. Again, um, certified professionals are aware of the constantly changing environment their profession faces and they possess the tools needed to anticipate and respond to that change. So when, when, when you are able to get a certification or when you're able to charter in a particular profession, you, you engage in something that we call constant learning. You are always what, learning something new, which helps you to do your work well. So currently with the semi exams or the ACCA exams, most of them are online based. So if you are, partaking in the SEMA or the ACCA exam, you realize that you are going to do a lot of Excel. At the end of the day, when you go or you move to your office, you are not going to be using any pen and paper to do any calculations. No, most of the work that you are going to do will be or not Excel. So it prepares you for, for some job responsibilities that you need. Apart from that, it also improves your, your skills and knowledge then it also offers you greater professional recognition from your peers. I don't know how many of you know that most of the students before they graduate from UGBS will have a number of um, professional certifications. I can count a number of them. I know of Adam Owen. I know of, I, I know of a lot of people. I can count like 
20 to 30 people who before they complete their undergrad, they, they complete their undergrad education, they have a, an additional professional certificate to their name. And it gives you a sort of recognition among your peers. Um, I remember when it was time for national service and all those things, most people would like to work in the big four if you've worked in a, if you work, if you studied accounting. But what the big four also wants is someone who is a professional. So definitely, they are going to take someone who has an ACC certification, who has an IC certification before you. And even if it's an investment company, they also look at someone who has done some Excel training, who has some basic knowledge about investment, they'll consider that person before you. So you tend to get a recognition among your peers. Also, the certification provides for greater earnings potential. Definitely, I know we are all in school, want to, we all want to work, but the major reason why I want to work is, is the money. So if you want to get more money, it's, it's sometimes advisable that you tend to be a member of such professional um, um, bodies. Um, you may be an account officer somewhere, you'll be earning, let's say, 2000 someone will be a certified chartered accountant, the person will be earning 3500 By the end of the day, you people might be doing the same work, but just because of what the fact that the person has a professional certificate and you don't have any data, that's why the person is not earning more than you. So you tend to increase your earning potential. Um, these are just a list of professional certifications for for finance students like that. So I'm going to take them one after the other. So the first one is the prestigious CFC um, um, certification. So the full meaning is the Chartered Financial Analyst. It's, it's a highly sought after by finance professionals around the world. It's a globally recognized um, um, certification. It consists of three levels and it normally takes an average of four years to complete all three levels. It comes in three levels. And it is widely regarded as one of the top finance certifications in the world. I think in Ghana here, the last time I checked, we had about 37 chartered financial analysts in Ghana here. They are, they are not a lot. It takes a lot of time for you to complete this type of exams. The main focus of this certification is on portfolio management and investment analysis. So you guys are now coming to the water and so you will be exposed to some investment appraisals like present value analysis, sensitivity analysis, portfolio management, asset allocation. So the CFA course is just an advanced form of what, of what you'll be doing in the undergrad level. The main exam topics for this particular program includes ethical and professional standards, quantitative methods, economics, financial reporting and analysis, corporate finance, portfolio management, equity management, fixed income, derivatives and alternative investment. So it's, 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 it boils down to how ethical you will be when you are on the job. That's why this particular certification plays much emphasis on the fact that you need to take an ethical and professional standard, but cause as part of you, as, as part of you um, um, going in for this certification. Um, when, we come, when it comes to the cost matters, it's typical, it's, it typically costs between $4,000 to $5,000 to, to, to finish the entire um, course. It's, it's costly, it's very, very expensive. So normally we don't see much people doing it. That's why in Ghana we have about 37 to 40 people who are CFAs recognized in Ghana. And the pass rate ranges from 30 to, sorry, ranges from 20 to 35% as to the number of people who normally, who actually goes in and are able to, 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 to finish the course and have the CFA chapter to their name. The next one is the financial modeling and valuation analysis, which is commonly known as the FMVA certification. This one too is a new and it's it's increasingly becoming popular. It's, it's becoming a popular option for corporate finance professionals to obtain a financial modeling certification. 
This particular certification comes from the Chartered Financial Institute. This is also a global institute. The courses um, range from how to build a financial model to advanced valuation techniques and sensitivity analysis, all using practical applications in Excel. As a finance person, one important application that you should be in bed with is Microsoft Excel. You'll be using it very often. So if you are someone who do not like using Excel or you don't know how to use it, after this slide, I'll talk about some free courses that you can engage in to, to, to help you get basic to intermediate skills in Excel. Now, the full FM VA program is an affordable investment. It's normally cost around $500 for you to get the entire course. That's around 2,700 Ghana CDs. And it comes with over 24 courses and over 100 hours of video instruction. So this, you don't have to go to the classroom, work to the, no, everything is virtual. It's a virtual classroom based thing. You learn at your own pace. The pass rate is normally 70%. Now, the most practical analyst skills that you are going to gain from this certification include, um, you'll be able to do financial analysis, you'll be able to build a financial model in Excel, you'll be able to do business valuations in Excel, you'll also be able to do advanced applications such as M&A, sensitivity analysis and scenario analysis, and you'll also be able to create PowerPoint presentations as a finance person, if you're supposed to pitch an idea to investors or any other person, you have to do a presentation. And that's one thing that students normally shy away from. They are afraid of, they are afraid to present. But then if you are able to go through this course, you'll be able to create powerful PowerPoint presentations and you have video lessons on how you are going to pitch your idea and how you're also going to do a presentation. The next one is the ACCA, ICAG or the SEMA. Um, I know Paul, Mr. Paul earlier spoke about the SEMA certification. So I'm going to talk about the ACCA and the ICAG. So with the ACCA, it's a 13 paper course. You are supposed to write or pass all before you are going to receive a certification. So when, 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 when you are done with the ACCA, you become an affiliate to the association. Then after three years, when you've been able to work to show that you respect the ethics and standards of the association, you are you are you are fully graduated as a full member of the association. That's where you can have the name attached or the ACCA sign attached to your name as a certified chartered accountant. So with the ICAG2, it's it's normally 14 papers. It's 14 papers. It's divided into three levels. It's it's for Ghana and some West African countries. Sorry, something I didn't add with the ACC certification is that most people think that when you get the ACCA, you'll be able to practice in Ghana. Yeah, you can have the ACCA and practice in Ghana, but then if you have an ACCA certification, you can't verify financial statements in Ghana. The current laws re requires that if you want to verify or certify financial statement in Ghana. You should be a member of the ICAG. So any person who has an ACCA certification, who wants to certify a financial statement will need to take the tax and the law papers from the ICAG before you can become what? A certified chartered accountant who will be allowed to sign financial statement for institutions in Ghana. The ICA, the, sorry, the ACCA2 is in three folds. It's level one, level two, level three. Normally the prices changes as and when the pounds to the CD um, 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 changes. So you may be writing a paper for 1,400 Ghana CDs, only one paper in the ACCA. So with the ACCA, the only advantage is that it's UK recognized and there are some countries in Europe that also recognize it. But the major disadvantage is if you don't have the funds, hidden go in there. It's very expensive because of how our CD behaves. 
towards the pound. But then the ICAG is, 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 is not that expensive. You can start doing it now. You can start, it depends on the money that you have. So normally what I tell people is you can sit down and do a cost benefit analysis see that, okay, how much am I going to spend for ICAG? How much am I going to spend for ACCA? Will it be okay for me? Which one can I afford? Then you choose that one. At your level, since you are entering into level 300, you can decide to start any of these professional certifications now, being in the ACCA, the ICAG, or the FMVA. But with the Chartered Financial Analyst Program, you can only start after you are down your undergrad. But as and now that you are moving on to level 300, it's advisable that if you have the funds, you can start any of the FMVA, the ACC, or the ICAG, or similar as Mr. Paul said. It all depends on it all depends on, on, on the amount of money that you have. And also, if you decide to start an ACCA, you being a finance student, they they are going to um, 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 give you some exemptions. I don't know the, the exact number of exemptions that they give to finance students. Normally for the finance students, you only get the exemptions after you complete or after you are done your undergrad course. But with the accounting students, because they are accounting students, um, they normally enroll on what you call their accelerate. So their accelerate will be that they, they, they will be exempted from writing seven papers for the ACCA. So they tend to write only six because they are accounting students. But you be in the finance department, you tend to get, I think, is it that three or four exemptions from ACCA? And that is upon completion of your undergrad degree. With the ICAG too, there are some exemptions for finance students and accounting students as well. Now, the last professional certification is the Ghana Stock Exchange Securities Code. So this is, this is designed to upgrade and update the knowledge of professionals and experts in the in the in the securities industry. They they equip normally beginners with comprehensive knowledge about the structure, the structure operations and regulations of the securities market. So some of the courses that they do it includes corporate finance, investment analysis, portfolio management, securities trading, among others. Now, when you are able to finish all the levels, when you're able to finish all the, all, 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 all the levels, you are going to get a certificate from the Ghana Stock Exchange for you to add to your CV or to, to your qualifications. And it pays a lot. Um, recently, I saw a job opening that they were requesting that the prospective candidate should be someone who has the GSC course certificate. Yes. Now, because of time, I'll, I'll move on to the last slide, which is the freebies. So th this freebies is just some free courses that any finance student should take. Like if you want to be a finance student, you want to excel in the world of finance, these are courses that you should take. The first one is the Excel Crash Course. This is a free course. It's an online course from the CFI, Chartered Financial Institute. If you go on Google right now and you just search for Excel Crash Course, you are going to have it to enroll on it. It's, it's a virtual based platform. You watch the videos, you learn the Excel tricks, how best you can do pivot tables and view lookups, all the necessary tricks for, for, for beginners. You can learn it from there. And we have the CFE foundation exams. So we have the CFE uh, chartered exams. That one you pay for it, but the, with the CFE foundation exams, it's a free course that they give it to students and professionals. So you can decide to take that one too. And the last one is um, Firstman Microsoft Excel Fundamental. So that one too is more of you getting Excel training and you being to do, you being able to do financial analysis with, with Excel. So I'll end by saying it's very important for you to get professional certification if you want to be in the finance world. It gives you exposure. It helps you to learn very well on the job and all those things. So if you have the time, if you have the funds right now, you can decide to enroll with either the ACC or the ICA or SEMA. 
then if you want to go into deep risk management, deep investment anal an analysis, you want to be a portfolio manager, you can decide to also try the prestigious CFA charter. So thank you very much for your time. Um, I'd like to take your questions now. Thank you very much, Mr. Evans. And please, we are taking questions now. Please, any questions for Mr. Evans? Um, Davis, please, you can speak. Okay, thank you very much, Ivy. So, um, Mr. Evans, please, I want to ask, with the Excel crash course offered by CFI and with the first man Microsoft Excel fundamentals, do they offer the same courses or um, if we, or after we go for the CFI, we can also go for the first man Microsoft Excel fundamentals? So um, you can decide to do all the two. Uh, you may be enrolled in the Excel crash course. There'll be some functions in there that you will not find when you enroll on the first man Microsoft Excel fundamental course. So I normally advise people that if you have the time, you can try all the two. Okay, thank you very much. And um, please, Yunus Asari is asking, what are some of the career options that are opened up to you with these qualifications? So if you are able to get any, attain any of these qualifications, let me start with the CFA. You can be a portfolio manager. You can be an investment analyst in any of the investment firms. Um, you can be a risk manager. You can be a risk analyst. That's for the CFA. But with the ACC, IC, you can be a tax person, you can be a management accountant, you, uh, management accountant, you can be an auditor, you can be um, 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 you can be a tax planner as well, you can be a CFO as Paul mentioned earlier on. And with the FMV, it's just an additional course that boosts your financial modeling skills. If you really want to model well in Excel. That's a course that you have to take as, as an added advantage. It gives you much job opportunities if you have that particular skill in the finance world. And the last one with the GST course, you can be a, a financial planner, a financial advisor, normally wealth management. So these are some of the authorized the officer or author, authorized the member. You can go into brokerage or you can be a broker for, for some brokerage houses. Brokerage houses normally they deal between um, a seller and a buyer. So before you can get shares to buy on the GSE, you need to go to a broker first. So you can be that broker. So they see what you call brokerage. That's their fees. Yeah. So those are some of the career options open up in this field. Thank you very much, Mr. Evans. Please, um, she's asking another question that, um, among all these qualifications, which one would help with? Um, investment banking. So investment banking, I advise you going for FMV, the financial modeling valuation analysis. Then if you have the funds, you can start the CFA program. But okay. with the free courses too, you can try and do the CFA foundations. This is going to help you. Yes. Please, Eunice, I hope your question has been answered. And please, are there any further questions for Mr. Evans? I guess there are no more questions. Um, Mr. Evans, please, thank you very, very much for your time. And um, FUNSA is very grateful for the moment you spend with us, we are very grateful. All right. Thank you to Ivy. Bye. Bye. So, um, on the flyer, we had um, Professor Lord Mensah from the University of Ghana Business School. He's a lecturer from the 
finance department. But unfortunately, he says he's, he has a program and he has to attend to it as well. So along the line, when maybe we could have another session with him, then he speaks to us about things we, he also has to give to us. Um, He's um JC, please. He spoke about the free Excel courses, so that's the Excel crash course, and and then the first man Microsoft Excel fundamentals. So you can search online for them, and then you get them. Yes, and um, so finally we are ending this meeting. Um, I hope I hope. Our questions, most of our questions have been answered. Um, please, you can unmute and then let us know if this this session was was good, was um, helpful. Hello. Georgina, please, you can speak. Okay. Um, to me, this session was quite eye-opening and very, very helpful. Um, I had a lot of questions before um, I joined, and I can say that now about, should I say, 90% of my questions have been answered. I'm really grateful to you guys for doing this for us. Thank you. Okay, that's fine. You are welcome. We are also- We are most welcome, Georgina. And uh, we are also grateful that you attended this session. You being not only you, but then you and your colleagues. Yes, please. And so please, I'd like to introduce the um, FINSA executives to us all. So FINSA is Finance Student and Associates. And I'm Ivy Akutosunati and I'm the FINSA president. And I'm a BA student. I'm offering finance and Kiswahi. Yes, so there's Aram. Okay, I think I have to. There's Aram. Um, Aram is the vice. Aram is the vice president for City Campus. Aram, please. He helped with the courses you are supposed to do for next semester. So he's Aram Bismarck. Um, Beckley. Aram, please. If I didn't mention your name, oh, pardon me. And he's a BSc banking and finance student. He's from City Campus. And Aaron, please kindly say hi. Hello, Aaron. I guess Aram is not on here. And please, there's um, Dr. Asantua Ado. Dr. Asantua Ado is a BA student as well. She's offering um, BA finance and information studies. She's the organizing secretary for FINSTA. Dr. Asantua Ado, please, I mean, say hi to the people. Hello, everyone. It's actually a privilege to have all of you on board and um, to honor our invitation as executives to have this orientation for all of you. We are most grateful. Lady President Ivy, please take over. Thank you very much, Dr. Adu. Um, also, we have 
Okay, yes. We have Erica. Erica is um a dinner secretary for Fensa. She's the dinner secretary and then she's a BSc student as well. So um Erica, please say hi. Hi everyone. It's a pleasure to meet you all. Thank you for coming for this meeting. Um, okay. I'll meet you in the next sessions. In I think I, I think um Aram um Dokas Asansa, if you could if you could see your face, <laughs> if you could see your faces, I think. So. Hey Ivy, I'm still not home, eh? so okay, I am. Um, where fine. I am? Yes, yes. Sure. So, as time goes on in the group, would would um put our pictures on the. For me, it's my picture on my. Um, yeah, but if they have the BAJCR app, they can scroll to departmental executives and uh, FINSA departmental executives. They will see us there. I think for the meantime. Yes. Please. Um. Also, we have Dark Michael. He's a financial secretary. He holds our press for us. Um, he's a BA student as well. He offers BA finance and information studies. Please, Michael, if you could say hi to our people. Hello. Please, guys, thank you for coming here. I'm Michael Dacon, your financial, financial secretary. Your questions and your contributions are much appreciated then we shall meet in subsequent sessions. Please, I will take off. Yes, please. Thank you very much. Um, I think that's all the executives here. And that will be done for today. Please, how do you assess the recording? And Rebecca, please, the recordings will be made available to you on the platform or better still on the Business House UCL YouTube channel, so you can access it. Um, also soon we are at the end of the meeting and I really like to um, thank you all for joining in the session for your questions and for your submissions. I hope we're able to address questions you guys were battling with and um we are we are still available so we are available on the platform if there's any question that could pop up anytime we are here to answer your questions and to help you can message any of us privately or you could message put the questions in the group as well um so um georgina I think you participated a lot. I would like you to say a bit of prayer with us. Um, okay, thank you. Um, please, let's close our eyes. Okay, so we pray in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Father Lord, we thank you for this session. We thank you for guiding us through it from beginning to the end. We thank you for all the information that was given us, for all the help that we got. And Lord, we pray that as we are beginning the academic year, as we go through it, we'll be able to apply what we've learned. We'll be able to gain more knowledge and hopefully complete it successfully. In Jesus' name have I prayed, amen. The name of the Amen. Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Gina, are you Catholic? Um, yes, please. Okay. That's oh, lovely. Catholic. Me too. Oh, wow. <laughs> All right. So I guess that's it for today. Um, have enjoy the rest of your day and then have a fruitful day. We'll talk on the group, I mean, on the WhatsApp platform. Bye. Bye, Bye. everyone. We are here to help. Bye. Feel free to text us. Uh, and uh, have a lovely day. You too.
Iran, please, you can end the meeting. Iram. Iram, please, you can end the meeting. Hello, I am. <laughs> this <is> boy. <laughs> Can you imagine they're also still here? <laughs> Hello, Aram. Um... <laughs> 